and this is my tiny house. We are located in Georgetown, Texas, right outside of Austin. I am a, an educator, a special educator particularly, and now a special education administrator, special programs administrator. I have lived in Austin, Texas area for my whole life. I just really love what I do. I didn't ever think that I was going into education until I started a special needs cheerleading program. I had coached cheerleading from high school into college and that really shifted where I was going with my life. And same thing with the tiny house, that's kind of how I ended up here. Educators, as a lot of people know, don't make a ton of money and I sold a traditional house to both minimize and to hope to kind of save some money and it's been a really great experience so far. The idea of minimizing, the idea of not having so many things controlling your life or determining what you do with your life and how you spend your money was really appealing to me. I really wanted to have a space that was cozy and was me and do more things with my life and spend more time with people and doing things that I enjoyed. And also I really hated cleaning and cleaning 2,000 square feet was not, not for me, especially in spaces that I really wasn't even using myself and just were collecting dust. It's much more manageable to clean a tiny house, to maintain a tiny house to the standard that I wanted to keep my house. So my tiny house was built by Nomad, which is located in Dripping Springs, Texas. And I have been living in my tiny house for just over two years. It was delivered in August of 2020. My tiny house is 43 foot long, eight and a half foot wide, and 13 foot tall. So my tiny house is parked next to my family's home and we are inside my fence. Uh, we share a fence with a gate with their yard over here. I also have this lattice that is now four foot tall because my dog was able to pull down the two foot tall and escape. That was fun adventure, so it's four foot tall now. So as you can see, my house is very, very blue. This particular shade of blue is my favorite color. I do hope one day to live by the beach and I think this would be a great color to go live by the beach. So that's it for outside and now we'll head on into the house, let's go. notice my house has a lot of really great natural light. I have a lot of windows in all of the rooms including the loft and in the gooseneck. I also have a lot of indoor plants. So we're starting off here in the living room. So I wanted the living room to be across from my doors and I do have French doors so that there's some inside outside transition when the weather's nice. Big thing with Texas is the bugs. I've been looking into getting one of those nets so that the air can still be coming in. But the doors do have built-in blinds and I do have the curtains for them. Curtains really help when it's cold outside to kind of keep some of the heat in. This is my office most of the time when I'm not just working from the couch. So I have a table to work from and a bench to work from. It's a lot more space for me to spread things out as I need to. The doggy door also comes in from here and I do have a through fan that comes from the living room area into this room to help move some of that air also. 
This is my standing desk. This is what I use most of the time in the living room, in the kitchen, as I'm doing other things and maybe still have my computer out for the day. It doesn't really have a home, so it just kind of rolls around wherever is best. And hidden under here, because my dogs like to live in a cave, is a doggy bed underneath the stairs. And then I also have just been using curtain rods to hide my storage that is here and on the other side as well. And there's all my beautiful plants. I added a fan in here as well for the really hot months. And now we'll climb up into the gooseneck part of the house. It is a pretty tight space up here, but I kind of like it. It makes it cozy for when I'm up here for bedtime, for when it's just me time. I also have a projector up on the ceiling. I don't have a TV, so I just have this old cork board because I was a teacher that I covered in a sheet to make a projector screen for myself. I plan out my clothes. All of that's kind of organized right here. That's one of the things that helps me out in the morning. Now for a brief message from our sponsor, Cook Unity. Do you love to eat delicious food and travel? Well, Cook Unity is your ticket to taste bud adventures. It's the first chef to you meal delivery service. Each week, a diverse group of award-winning chefs handcrafts globally inspired meals from vegetarian to paleo and everything in between. The menu rotates so there's always something new to try and it's made with fresh ingredients, nothing artificial or lame. Meals are delivered fresh and fully cooked, so you only need to heat them up. Quick, easy, and best of all, no cleanup. In a tiny kitchen, that's really appreciated. Tonight, we're eating the walnut miso crusted salmon with bok choy and charred Napa cabbage by Esther Choi. Each Cook Unity meal is seriously delicious Ready for your taste buds to travel the world? Go to cookunity.com slash tinyhouse or click the link in the description and use our code tinyhouse50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out for yourself. About every three months I go through what I've been using, what I haven't been using, especially as I do still acquire new things. So I think that's one of the biggest things that I appreciate and keeps me thoughtful. It also keeps me on a cleaning schedule, I think. Even though I feel that my home is much cleaner possibly than my last home was, I notice all of the dog hair because of the small space. It's very fall right now. I notice all the leaves that come in, the gravel that comes in, but it also it brings that awareness to what I want in my space and how I am taking care of my space. The biggest thing that surprised me going from a three bedroom, two bathroom house to a 356 square foot tiny house was that I think I'd actually probably go smaller. I still have a lot of things that I don't necessarily need, but I was concerned about the downsizing and I planned for the downsizing for a long time. But when I got into the space, I still use all of the space, but I also feel like I could functionally live in a hundred square feet less than what I ended up purchasing. I love my home and there's still things that I would change. I put a lot of thought into my home and there are still things that didn't work for me the way that I thought they would. I thought a lot on the layout, but not as much on like light fixtures or where outlets were. And some of those things really matter in a tiny house and how you set up your furniture. I also didn't do built-in furniture because it was less comfortable as what a lot of people had given me feedback on. And I think that was a good move, but then you really have to think about what furniture you're bringing into your home as well and how that's going to work with your space. Something also to consider is that smaller appliances don't mean cheaper appliances. Something that I didn't mention earlier about my couch is that it also has storage under all three sections of the couch. So that's super helpful for blankets and pillows and all of that extra stuff and then we'll move into the kitchen space. Something here that's super helpful when I'm actually cooking is that there's an extra table space here. Originally, I had a bar stool that I'd sit at and I'd work from here. 
with the new couch. I leave it down most of the time and just use it when I need that extra space for cooking. I have a gas range and it is under this nice oven cover that I made. I love it, it's great. Hood vent for that. I love my kitchen with all of the storage space it has though. I have room for all the pots and pans that I need, all the cleaning supplies that I need, spices. I have this lovely huge double sink that there's some hand wash clothes in right now, as well as some dishes that I did this morning. And then I have lots of storage on this side underneath the stairs as well. So moving past the sink and over to this side of the kitchen, I have a lot more of my appliances. One that's been really helpful that I never really thought about is just an ice maker since my refrigerator doesn't have an ice maker and there's a limited amount of freezer space for ice trays and ice tray spill and all of that. This has been really awesome. I also have my KitchenAid since I did start baking a lot more sourdough, all of that over the pandemic and then I have the little toaster oven. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to get rid of this one and buy a new, more traditional oven to go in the space where the microwave is. But finding an oven that is 22 inches instead of 24 inches is a bit of a challenge. Across from my sink and where my appliances are is my fridge and freezer. So freezers on the bottom and also all of the storage for food, coffee, dog food down here, and my vacuum that picks up all of the dog hair every day. In here, I have a lot of things that are built in and I really am happy with how it turned out. This is my wardrobe for most of my hanging clothes as well as jewelry and shoes are all in here. Also on this side, I have my incinerating toilet. It looks like a big hunk of metal. It pretty much is, and it can be really loud. So right now it's not running. That is something to consider if you are considering an incinerating toilet that they are, they are pretty loud. I have instructions for using the incinerator toilet up here for when I have guests over. I have uh, my sink with some more storage built in underneath and some more storage built in back behind the mirror in the medicine cabinet as well. And then I have a shower, not a tub uh, only on this side. One of the things that I found helpful was a shower curtain that has storage built into it as well. And then I have a washer dryer combination that's stacked. I've actually loved having a stacked washer dryer. I normally just throw all everything dirty in, no hamper needed. The smaller loads have made it a lot more manageable to just do laundry as needed instead of waiting for everything to pile up. So I've really appreciated that. So my parents were not thrilled that I was choosing to go tiny instead of le and leave my traditional home that I owned. One of the things that they were concerned about was the quality of the build and that was also kind of a pro for using a builder that was here in Texas. They got to see some of the homes when we went out there. It was helpful that they also appreciated the builder and the materials that they were using. I truly feel like my home is like any other traditional home. It's just built on a trailer. And their concern was with some of like the prefab or some of the mobile homes that are built with less high-end finishes, like some of the park models even, where they're not made out of a wood, they're made out of hardy plank or something else that is not gonna hold up as well. I had a great experience with Nomad just working with them beforehand on the drawings and kind of the back and forth with staying within the budget with different things that I wanted to keep. And along the way, I was able to again see everything that was kind of going on at certain checkpoints. When I purchased my tiny house, it was again March of 
2020 and the cost of lumber had not changed and I had already signed a contract. So I was very fortunate to stay at 85,000 for uh, 356 square feet, a almost as big as you can get tiny house. Since March of 2020, I know that the prices have really changed. Um, the market has really changed because of the cost of goods and supplies. So I am very fortunate to have bought when I did. So now we'll head through the kitchen and back to the second loft. This one is only three to four feet. Up here, this space, as you can see, is much tighter. We're currently above the bathroom and I have our dog bed over here. This loft again is most of the time used for my dogs. They pretty much have their own queen size bed up here most of the year, but when it does get pretty cold, this is the warmest spot of the house. So a lot of times I will we'll come up here with them during the winter or even sometimes on the weekend just to spend some extra time with them. Living next to my parents has been very positive in a lot of ways. I have been able to rely on them for help with my dogs who are not on camera today because they're very loud and um, would be all over the place. In the beginning, it definitely felt like there was a lot of expectation to see them every day and I think we've drifted away from that a little bit, which has been nice to still have a separation of space. We are connected by our yards, basically. There's a fenced yard on both sides and we put up a fence in between. So there's a way for the dogs to go back and forth between the doggy doors on both houses, but also some, some separation. We do share, you know, some costs. If we get groceries or certain, like, we share a gym membership. Also putting the infrastructure in, the fencing, the gravel, the pad that I'm on the electricity hookups, the internet hookups, those were things that I did take care of for the infrastructure. My arrangement with my parents has been super, super helpful for me to save money as I've been hoping to buy land, but on a month to month basis, I'm very fortunate that I'm able to save money and not incur any costs with rent or anything like that. So I think in the future, I plan to stay in smaller spaces. I don't know that I'll stay in a tiny house for my, my whole life, but I think that I'd love to buy land and put several tiny houses to be able to provide that living space for other educators, just knowing the struggles financially and with housing that we face. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.